Um, I don't know if I need to have a roll call. Is Bob Frank online? Okay, we have everybody here but Bob Frank. Bob emailed me this morning, he was gonna be online. And Daniel McGuire is missing. Okay, do we have proof of notification, Adam? Okay. Approval of the minutes from November 14th, 2022. Everybody read them, they're online or in the iPad or sent. Okay, Chad Cosgrove moves, Ingrid Glassman or seconds. All in favor signify by saying aye. Opposed? Okay, motion carried. Okay, do we have any public comments? Okay. We'll move on to number five or number six then. A presentation and resolution action to be taken on a resolution. So, uh, Sean, are you going to lead that? Yes, Madam Chair, I am. Um, and MIS has loaded the presentation up onto the computer screen. So I may be able to advance the slides from here as soon as Mr. Cruz brings it up on the, oh, that is the wrong one. No, that's the other part of my life. <laughs> Did you load the wrong one? Um, would it be possible just to have um, a minute or two to get the right presentation loaded up? Yes. Okay. Um, I would like to say, I forgot to say about the approval of the agenda. I think that's not on here, that we are deleting number nine so that you know that. And I forgot to write approval of the agenda. Do I have a motion then to approve the agenda with deletion of number nine? Okay, Mark moves. Do I have a second? Okay, Chad seconds. All in, Chad Cosgrove seconds. All in favor? Okay, okay opposed. Okay. Um, I think we could go on to um, number seven email correspondence with UW President Jay Rothman. Um, <coughs> Did everybody read that on their iPads? I contacted Mr. Rothman. Just a minute, get my dates. Huh? On November 29th and told him about the education committee and um, that uh, we were disappointed in some aspects of what was happening and that we'd like to move forward and develop a plan for transition. And in the press, as you probably all know, um, thought I had all my papers exactly together and now I don't. <laughs> A minute. Oh, yeah. In the press, as you know, uh, Mr. Rothman said uh, that they would be transitioning in-person degree instructional programs at Richland to other campuses. But his number two is develop a plan related to the ongoing presence at and mission of the Richland campus, including, for example, offering enrichment programs, online reskilling and upskilling courses for adult learners, and online degree completion courses at campus facilities. The plan should also complete contemplate involving other partners in campus activities and involve Richland County government officials as well as business and community leaders. The focus of the plan should be on maintaining a sustainable presence at the Richland campus that meets regional needs. So I addressed that in my email to him and he wrote back to me uh, thanking me and that he would be uh, asking UW Platteville 
uh, to develop a plan and to beginning work and to begin working with university partners, including shared governance, county government, and business leaders. So uh, we have Carolyn here today, and hopefully she'll explain some of that later. Um, so that was my correspondence. I wrote back to him once more to explain more in detail how um, we feel like we've been sort of left out of the situation and we haven't understood exactly what's going on that we felt that some of the factors that they were taking into consideration were not factors that we would agree with. And then last Thursday, I attended the uh, Regents meeting in Madison and we met with Mr. Rothman and, the, and for a short time and he reiterated what he said that the Platteville would be working on a plan. And then we talked to uh, the regents and the president of the regents told us, and this is gonna be confusing for us this morning, this afternoon, whatever it is, um, that the regents, that the campus is not closed. To close the campus, the regents have to vote on closing the campus. So I did try to ask, what does that mean? And she said that we'll be working with Platteville on what the new format for the campus will be. So the campus, we're using the word closing, is not closed. That's the only wording they said not to use. Uh, so we're trying to go forward. And um, that was my, I just wanted to know an update on that com communication. Any questions? Okay, are you ready? Okay. Okay, so uh, Madam Chair, the there's a um, presentation that Mr. Cooey's pulling up right now on the screen, and it feels like about six months ago that we last met here because so much has happened since since our last meeting. Um, the announcement from the UW system president that in the, the week before Thanksgiving or rather the day or two days before Thanksgiving um, has sucked up a lot of energy um, since then for me and a lot of other people. Um, so this right here that this presentation that I'm gonna walk through, I just wanna be real clear about who made this, who's looked at it, who's given feedback on it. And I think the idea is today, we want this committee to give feedback. And by we, I mean Linda and I, because uh, Chair Gentis and I have looked through this. And we met with about a dozen students from UW Richland last Tuesday, and also looked through this and they gave their feedback on it. So, so far it's been Chair Gentis and several UW Richland students and myself and plus, I've been listening to a lot of the things people have been saying. There's been a lot being said recently, um, including in the media about this, a lot of statements coming out from different people like uh, state legislators and uh, UW staff. And, and um, so it kind of incorporates all of that. So I just want to be really kind of clear and give that context. And then there's a resolution that goes with this, a proposed resolution um, that could be sent to the county board if the committee chooses to do that. So it's we'll go to the resolution after the presentation and just stop me if you got any questions as I'm going through this. Ooh, I gotta go to the left side to click, is that right? There we go. Okay, so the status of the UW Richland campus, this really relates to that closed session item that's next on the agenda. Um, the presentation overview, I'm just gonna walk through the problem about our community and how to move forward. Um, by the way, a different version of this, an earlier version after the students looked at it was shared with the UW Board of Regents also. But this is evolving, things are moving quick on us. And so we're having to jump and uh, react as, as things happen. So this is the big problem that now we know more has been hitting us over the head. Um, and we've got more and more data that's coming out on this, and so I'm gonna go through some different charts to give a bigger view, but I think a lot of us have been trying to answer this question, of course, is why is this happening? And we're hearing lots of answers. So this is some data for the entire UW system over the past three decades. There was a peak of student enrollment 
at both the UW system and the technical college system back in 2011. And there's been a decline since then. But the decline you can see is much flatter than the decline we're dealing with here on our campus. If you start digging into just the UW system and the different campuses of the UW system, you'll see that Madison, Green Bay, and La Crosse have had increasing student enrollment in the past 10 years, whereas all the other four-year campuses have seen decreases. The tech colleges have seen a 20% decrease. The former UW colleges, that's where we're included. So there used to be, what, 13 two-year campuses. UW Richland was one of those. They used to call them the UW colleges. So that's how they grouped, um, that's how they grouped the enrollment in this particular chart that the Wisconsin Policy Forum made. So more than 40% drop in across the entire state, all 13 two-year campuses. But here, it's an 84% decrease. So we know that something's going on differently here in Richland. So this is our history since 1973. So since 1973, we've always had more than 200 students until, looks like the year 2019, if I'm reading that right. So in 2018, we had over 200 students still. So what's going on with these big drops? The big drop here, starting in 2014, was what was called regionalization. They started combining Richland with Baraboo, Rock County. They started taking away quite a few of the staff um, on our campus here. And then the second big drop, this came, they call it restructuring. Linda's been teaching me all these words over the past couple of weeks because I was trying to make, trying to understand what was happening here and, and she, we got the labels right finally. This is when we went to Platteville. So the combination of those two things, regionalization and restructuring, eliminated the following things in Richland. The position of Dean, the position of recruiter, which uh, I've heard, I'll have to confirm this, but they did 55 annual school visits just on behalf of Richland before this happened. We've lost 11 out of 18 faculty members, like professors. We no longer have a marketing or strategic plan. We lost our international coordinator, including all of that much more lucrative international student uh, tuition than in-state tuition. Continuing Ed, Youth Options Program, and the Pilot Academic Alliance Program, which was at Richland Center and Ithaca High Schools. So um, we've heard a lot about the recruiting issue. And probably I think the recruiting issue has been the thing that we've been most aware of. Um, and we have heard, even as of yesterday, I'm still getting emails and messages from people telling more and more about this whole recruiting story and what, what happened in Richland that's so unique from all these other campuses across the state. So I know Mr. Brenninger is here today, uh, but I pulled this quotation from the from the um, testimony he submitted to this committee in September. Um, back in 2018, uh, most of you have probably read this, but when he talked to the admissions staff down in Platteville, he was trying to enroll students here at Richland, the staff told him, why don't you just send all the students to Platteville instead of Richland? I'm gonna do this chronologically from the time Platteville took over to the current, current day, roughly. So a third from the left, this is Rebecca Smith. Um, she graduated back in 2014, and don't go back and look on her Facebook page at 2014, because you'll see all these pictures of hundreds of students at the Richland campus, and it makes you really depressed. <laughs> that was her graduating class. And she said that she first applied for a recruiter position. Um, after she graduated, she wanted to be a recruiter for Richland. Um, and she said during the interviews, they told her they wanted to keep the position at Platteville, only visiting the branch campuses as necessary. They asked a lot of details about willingness to travel, even splitting days between the campuses with only an office in Platteville. There was also a strong emphasis during the second interview about how to decide if branch campuses or the main campus would be a better fit for the student. The questions all seemed geared toward answering that Platteville was the best recommendation, regardless of student background and circumstances. Next up is Terry Sobronik. He's the president of the UW Richland Foundation. He said in 2019, the Richland County Foundation offered to pay for a salary of a full-time recruiter dedicated to the UW Richland campus. That offer was rejected. We were told by Chancellor Shields it was not our responsibility. So they wouldn't take our money. The students, um, 
two students, uh, one of them who's here today with us, Emily Lund, uh, who's a sophomore. She said, when I asked the Platteville recruiter about going to UW Richland, they came to her high school. She couldn't give me any more information besides it was located in Richland Center. And Jackson Kinney, who's in the middle here, he went to Riverdale and Muscaday. He said, in my junior and senior years, no one from Platteville came to talk about UW Richland. Brody Smith, he went to Highland. He said, we never had a recruiter come to Highland in my time in high school. He's a freshman right now here in Richland, at UW Richland. He said, if my high school peers had known that UW Richland feels like Highland with its small community atmosphere, I know that I wouldn't have been the only Highland student to come to UW Richland. He said that on the WRCO morning show, Ron Fruit asked him that question on December 2nd. Kathy Fry, um, she used to work at the Richland Center High School. She was the foreign exchange director. She's a second from the right in that photo. She's with some Richland international students here. They went to UW Richland. In January, 2021, I began working on an international program for the high school. My hope was to send students from the high school to UW Richland, which would help campus enrollment. We had one video meeting with the Platteville staff and it was honestly very discouraging. The person I talked with told me there would be no guarantee that students would go on to UW Richland, that they wouldn't necessarily be steered to our campus, but could go on to any school in the system. I thought it odd at the time, but now I'm pretty sure there was no intention of continuing our international program. And then back to Mr. Brenninger to bring us closer up to the, the current time in the admission season of 2022 to 23. So just a few months ago here, some Eagle School students attempted to enroll in UW Richland, but could not navigate the enrollment process. The process seemed so confusing. He dropped the application and enrolled in a different university. He told the other Eagle students it was very difficult to enroll in UW Richland, so they elected to enroll elsewhere. And then finally, um, Jackson Kinney, one of the students who was on a previous slide, reached out to Rhonda Scallon. She's the Boscobel School District Guidance Counselor. And through him, he wrote that she said, it's been several years since someone has recruited for UW Richland down at Boscobel. And then, um, you know, I think there's a lot of implication. Well, I shouldn't say implication. There's explicit things being said that UW Richland doesn't provide a quality student experience, and that's why President Rothman has made this decision um, in large part. And Jake, who's also with us today at this meeting, said regarding this idea from UW System Rothman, President Rothman, that the UW Richland campus wasn't offering the quality level of college experience we deserve, he did not inquire or communicate with the students about that. I, along with a large number of UW Richland students, have had an overwhelmingly positive overall experience. So, um, you know, a lot's been said about us, and I know that down in Platteville, they're making a great plan for us right now for our future without asking us for our input. So I thought, you know, we, we've just been talking about what are our strengths because we feel like, I feel like they've never known what our strengths are. They come and tell us what they, they're going to do, but they never say, well, what about what do you all think or what's good about you? So um, affordability and geographic accessibility for lower income and working people. This is a quote from Jennifer Carter. She's on the left. Her daughter, her daughter Autumn, is currently a freshman on campus. Um, she says she has enjoyed this year and the financial support along with the closeness to home, which allows us to help provide support for her. Um, a good beginning. We're hearing from a lot of people who used to go to Richland. This is Luis Alvarado. He lives in Guatemala now. He was obviously in the international program. He said, I think it's a really good place to begin for your freshman and sophomore years so you can go on to other things. Small class sizes. There's a quote from someone from DeForest who's, whose child came here. This is one of the classes, obviously, in this photo. Um, international program. Um, Kathy Fry again, who had that quote from before, they've been host parents to 15 international students at UW Richland. And our progressive history regarding female leadership. So Marge Wallace, she was the she she went to Madison to 
to secure this campus back in the late 60s. She's kind of the unofficial founder. And she was the first woman in Wisconsin to serve as a dean of a campus or in a chief executive administrator role at campus. So we've got a lot of community support. There's a student body who has truly taken the lead with interviews. I had not, I had not met any of them. I only met them because they did all those interviews voluntarily on their own. Um, there's more now. This was it's actually old information. They've been in the Milwaukee Sentinel Journal and um, Milwaukee Public Radio. They've been all over the place now. We've gotten over 1,500 signatures. That's a very conservative amount because there's a lot of paper signatures and businesses around town. And that mostly, that just includes as of last Thursday. Um, you can read those other things, all these other things that have been done. The county board, we passed a resolution in June asking the state to increase the budget to 2015 levels. And last month, this committee requested that UW system return a full-time recruiter to UW Richland. We were gonna forward that to the county board tomorrow night, but now, well, that's all up in the, up in the air. So the status of the campus right now, so we own and lease the 134 acre campus to the UW system. We have a memorandum of agreement is what it's called. It goes through 2042. The UW system in that MOA, it says they can leave each year on June 30th if budget appropriations from the state are not adequate. And in the resolution, I actually typed the language out to be a little more specific on, on what they say. So what we've been talking about is a proposal for the state, which obviously so far, you know, they're kind of doing this to us. They don't want to hear, hear us, but um, we're trying to get this idea out that there are other ways to do this besides what they're the ideas they're cooking up. Um, a two-year pilot program for what it would take to revive a branch campus. We could locate that at UW Richland. Um, the idea, and this we we'll want to hear a lot of feedback uh, on all these pro this proposal, really, because if the county board's going to jump on board, you know, we need to get make sure county board members are being heard. But shifting oversight from Platteville to Madison. And then serving as a relief valve for burgeoning enrollment. They're bursting the, the seams. They can't find enough housing for students. They can't find enough instructors to teach the students right now. Um, they have a very different problem than we do. Um, restore our budget to 2020, I'm sorry, to 2012 levels plus inflation. So that red line on the chart right there shows they cut our budget from 3.1 million in 2012 to 1.4 million currently. And if it had been adjusted for inflation, it'd be closer to 4 million. Um, and some people are saying um, right now, you know, it doesn't matter how many resources we put into UW Richland, student enrollment wasn't being fixed. Well, they weren't putting resources into UW Richland. They were taking away resources. So it's not accurate. So someone's not getting accurate information out to the legislate, to the legislator who said that. Um, and then give us a, enough autonomy to fill a niche. And what's our niche? Affordability and geographic accessibility for working people. So the foundation is well endowed for scholarships for freshmen and sophomores. Um, small class sizes, um, you know, we could serve UW's Madison students from rural places who would thrive more in a small community than a big city like Madison. And there are a lot of rural kids who go to a big city campus and then it's not a fit for them. You know, instead of dropping out, you know, they could come to a small town like ours and and we could give them a good beginning. Um, international students, we are, we're very experienced to being welcoming. We could, we've got the Smart Farm, the UW, and we don't own that. The UW Richland Foundation owns the Smart Farm, but, you know, maybe there's some potential for a Center for Rural Wisconsin or a Certificate in Rural Studies. There's the University of Nebraska. They do something like that. Um, so that's what that image on the right is. And then um, I think the proposal for the county is, and, you know, I've been thinking about this especially a lot because I'm working on the referendum committee and that is such a big lift right now. And like, how are we going to bring in more money? We have to do it. You know, we cannot stay at our 2010 levels of income or whatever it is. We're going to give raises. So we got levy limits and declining shared revenues. They're putting the squeeze on what we can provide. So we know there's a large backlog in campus building maintenance because of that. So the part of this proposal for ourselves and to see if we wanna get on board with this. I know this got really 
tamped down two years ago, didn't go anywhere. But I think now there's more interest in removing a portion of that 30 acres of farmland behind the campus from the memorandum of agreement. We already have funds to complete, you know, it's sloping farmland. So you gotta be considerate of the environment with that, putting a housing development on it. So that's why it says environment, environmentally friendly development plan. But we've got the housing authority money that's on the county board agenda tomorrow night. Um, and we're pulling that money back. Some of that, that money could be used to basically create a development plan that, that works. We, we've got money to, to be able to think and plan through that. It's about 70 grand, I believe. Um, we could somehow come up with a me mechanism to increase property taxes to dedicate and dedicate, I'm sorry, we could take the property taxes from the development and dedicate it to campus maintenance so that we could basically get off of the property tax, the current property tax levy amount by 2027, which we do need to figure out how to do that, hopefully today. And we could partner perhaps on development and engineering, but just an idea. So the proposal wrap up is an annual funding request to the state for a pilot program, 4 million in the next school year, 4.2 million in the year following, shift oversight from Platteville to Madison and remove farmland acres from the agreement for housing development. And then also we think an important piece of this because we never did it before and we could never get Platteville to agree to it. I remember being in this meeting and kind of dickering with them and not getting anywhere is setting some sort of goals for enrollment. We, we, need to, we need it to be good too, to be worth the investment. And they weren't ever really willing to set goals, I don't think, because they thought they, I don't think they thought they could meet them. Obviously they weren't recruiting for us, so how could they meet them, you know? So the, those are two ideas, 125 students by the next school year and 200 by the year following. Um, so then, I don't know, um, I'll just stop talking, I've talked a lot. Okay, any questions about this? Anything you would like more detail on? Um, there's, there's other people there, but there's quite a bit of housing available. I think 135 in the deans. Yeah, so there'd be 130, that is traditional residence halls. And then the hall behind, which is called what? <laughs> what? West Hall. And I think that has like 41, 42. Okay. The apartments would probably not be, they'd be rented out to somebody else. Yes, Daniel. Yeah, 98% of it. Mike, please. Well, there's people online. Ninety-eight percent of this proposal here was everything we already know. It's a wonderful school. It's worth saving. And then only the last two percent was about: is that a potential solution? Uh, and how? And what is the potential of that solution actually? correcting things and making things better. I mean, you just wanna sell some land and then that's that's gonna be our solution? No, I'd say if this slide right behind you right now says shift oversight from Platteville to Madison, that has gotta be a part of it um, because Platteville doesn't wanna recruit for Richland, that's clear. The other big part of it is the funding because you know, they've been slashing the budget. And so, you know, we don't have a recruiter. You want to remove Platteville out of the equation because they don't think they care about us here at Richland Center. Is that correct? That's the feeling that, that I think a lot of people have, and I would agree with that. Okay, well, how maybe do we... I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. You know, maybe we need to work it out with them, but that's, that's to me, this, after hearing all these things, that's, it's been a big challenge. Okay, we're at the, we've been given a closed down order here. No, now, we haven't gotten a closed down order. I, were you not here in the beginning? Okay. What is What did we get then? Um, I'm not quite sure, but the region said they did not vote to close the campus. They voted to stop 
in-person classes, but that there would be something else happening. And we are waiting to hear that. So they definitely said, quit using the word closing to me. Yes. We don't want us to use the word closing, but we could still use the word closing. They want to close any higher education at the campus. But I don't, don't know that yet for a fact. I'm, I, I, I don't know that for a fact. <laughs> I mean, well, if they take away any in-person classes. Well, they said no in-person classes, but I don't know if there's online. We don't know the plan. Is that correct yet? Yeah, yeah, okay. So what you're saying is we, we don't really know exactly what our problem is. How can we determine what our solution is if we don't know what our problem is? That's a very good point. It's very murky. So I think we're just trying to get out in front and give ideas of what we think could be the solution. Uh, Madam Chair. Yes, Ingrid. Do you know when we went to the regionalization, I think I'm using the right yes. term. Was it the Board of Regents then that decided what smaller campuses would be absorbed by which of the four-year campuses? Okay, regionalization wasn't absorbed by four-year campuses. Regionalization was that they combined three campuses together, uh, or four, and then they were still uh, UW colleges. Restructuring happened in 2018, and that's when we were assigned. The wrong term. No, that's all right. It's confusing. That's when we were assigned to an individual four-year campus. And I will ask uh, Michael, was that just a Mr. Rothman or Ray Cross decision, or was that a Regent decision? Yeah. Oh, wait. Yeah. These are, okay. I hear you, but I don't know if they can. Okay. I don't know the answer to that either. Any other questions? Well, for further definition here, to be clear about all this, <laughs> I, I mean, okay, we, we have this you. beautiful campus. Matter of fact, any community of 5,000 people would love to have that campus somewhere on their property. Okay, so if we lose the campus, what is the biggest loss here? Is this a loss to the young students that want to attend it? Or is this a loss to the city of Richland Center? Or is this a loss to the county of Richland? We have to approach it from that standpoint. What's the biggest loss here? And, who gets, and who's gonna benefit from it the most? Well, there's many factors in the loss. First of all, there's the economic impact that the campus as an industry has to the county. The other loss is that we have 96,000 square feet of buildings, and if you multiply that times $400 a square foot, uh, the buildings are worth approximately 38 million or more. So that's a loss to the county. Then there is the loss that we lost all those uh, faculty, staff, programs, continuing ed, in um, uh, uh, international program, uh, the Academic Alliance, the options programs, all of those things. And it's very interesting because the UW Colleges, which is a loss, was an accessible, affordable place. And when we were one unit, we were 13,000 about in numbers, which was usually the third highest institution in the UW system. And this main mission was access and affordability, call it high touch, high something, I'm not sure. And now that we're, they decided not to do that, uh, which was I, during Ray Cross's tenure, who was the president then, what I find mind boggling about this is that they were, it was the least expensive way for the state to educate a student for the first two years because the county owned the buildings. They just had to have the staff and the faculty there. And it met the needs of people around the state that couldn't travel as much. So it's a very, I think, and then when we were at the Regents meeting, he laid out his strategic plan. Uh, the first part had to do with increasing enrollment. The second part, was affordability and accessibility. And I guess what we're going to try to let, I'm not sure he's familiar with everything that was, 
but the UW colleges was affordability and accessibility. So there are a lot of losses there. Besides that, a community like ours, and I have a list of over 138 people in this town who are in high professional positions, who all attended the UW Richland and who all we were able to keep here in our county. Therefore, uh, when we lose an institution like that, we lose probably developing professionals in this area, physicians, nurses, uh, veterinarians, accountants, uh, insurance agents, uh, people working here at the county, in our county, we lose their ability to probably start their education here and can move on and would come back. And communities that have a two-year campus in them are usually highly thought of as places for industry to come. So those are all reasons that we might lose the campus that would impact our community. Yes, Lee? Uh, I think I want to know. Uh, speaking as a former board member, I am Lee Van Landate, uh, sitting on this very committee as a part of the uh, Richmond County Board. Uh, I was on this committee and we sat many times with Linda's chairman and uh, we went through these things. We saw the demise of this, this system, uh, and it goes back quite a ways uh, since the pro-education mob showed up in Madison, who are not pro-education. Um, all three of the categories you suggested would be directly affected by what's happening. Uh, we sat in with the Platteville folks and they talked about how wonderful the system is, but everything's being filtered to Platteville. The two years I was on this committee, every time we spoke, I encouraged those that were there to get recruiters into the local high schools, and it never happened. I mean, what Sean just reported before, by students who were not aware of it or were not encouraged to go here, uh, you know, we've suffered. And my wife and I moved to this community 23 years ago, and one of the, one of the draws was the university. Uh, we're both former educators. I taught in high school, U.S. history, and the fact that we were able to take uh, in, uh, courses to enhance those things that we enjoyed was a dir direct opportunity to adults my granddaughter graduated from uh, Richland High School three years ago, and she took enough credits back and forth between her high school experience and the university that she was able to start at the University of Milwaukee as a sophomore because these credits were available to her here. And so she was an asset to the community. This, high, this uh, experience was an asset to her, a direct asset. And I think that if we were to lose this to those people who have been collecting more and more power at the state level and diminishing education throughout these smaller communities, we're going to be in a bad way. I, I think that uh, our votes count, and uh, right now the state is sitting on $6.6 .6 billion in excess money. And I think it's a crime that they are not supporting schools, they are not supporting our local communities. We're having to make a decision now because of their lack of responsibility to their local communities, their counties, uh, the sheriff's department, everything. So I'm, I'm done right now, but I definitely agree we need to do something. If there's some way that we can bring suit against the, the state for violating their agreement, I would very much encourage that if they don't, you know, realize what the reality of this is for all of all of us. Thank you very much, Linda. I appreciate it. Okay, because um, we 
Vatican. I think we should, we have a resolution and I think that is ongoing with this discussion. So can we, can we put the resolution up and then we can have this ongoing discussion. So we'll keep moving here. And uh, Mr. Cruz is gonna pull it up on the, the screen here. I've got it on my folder. I'm not, I think it starts 06 resolution, I think is the file name. <laughs> um, but I just wanna say too, to Supervisor McGuire, I think it's such a good question to put it like that because I think what we're losing is our future. I, Are you catching the last word? What? Our future. I think that we're they're stealing our future from us, our vitality. Our not only, you know, it comes down to money, but it's also our kids. Because where are the kid where are the students gonna go? They're not gonna stay in Richland Center. So that's what they're stealing when they make these decisions. And I also don't want anyone to think, because we were there on Thursday and we are not just lobbying one party. This is a two party problem. We had one of the students was, and these students were brave too. <laughs> they walked up to every board regent who was there. They sat in a meeting with the president and took a punch from him for us when he said it's a done deal. And then one of them, intercepted the governor in the hallway who didn't have the time of day for this for us and we had driven all the way there so that's what they're really it, it's democrats and republicans we have not heard one word of support from the governor about this we've heard negative stuff from the republicans so i mean it's like it's the people in madison the ones who are in power they don't care about us right now that's that's what regardless of, political, regardless of political affiliation i am not hearing it from we don't have any support at this point express support Actually, we have support from mr rothman about having a transitional possibility so i don't totally agree with that you know i mean he has he he, he said he was staying with him but he he wasn't totally negative to us. It did, wasn't the answer we wanted, but, you know, so let's move on to the resolution, please. Okay. So um, what I did is I just took that resolution and Linda looked at this yesterday too, after I worked on this. So I took that resolution from the last meeting. Um, we had the resolution supporting a full-time recruiter being returned to our campus. Um, so I changed the title to a resolution stating the position of the Richland County Board of Supervisors regarding the status of the UW Richland campus. So then this language is pretty much the same in the next um, in the next line there. The chart is a different one. I pulled in that chart that shows, and I don't know if I can, can I scroll down on this? Oh, I can use, oh, wow. Let's see if I can do this. But you'll just click on it. Scroll. Left click? No, nope, you yeah, should be a left click and then scroll. Yeah, I'm left clicking. I'm not getting anything. I don't know if you can scroll it down too. Yeah, so it's got that new chart. And read it. Oh, should I read the whole thing? Yes. Okay. All right. I'm just going to do it on my laptop then and then if, um, or my iPad rather. You want a paper copy? No, I got it right in front of me. Okay, a resolution stating the position of the County Board of Supervisors regarding the status of the UW Richland campus. Whereas student headcount enrollment at the UW Richland campus has dropped from over 400 in the 2012 to 2013 school year to 64 in the current 22 to 23 school year. And whereas the campus budget allocated by the state of Wisconsin has fallen from approximately 3.1 million in the 2012 to 2013 school year to 1.4 million in the current 22 to 23 school year. And whereas the consumer price index shows that prices increased 25% between 2012 and 2022, and whereas if the UW Richland campus budget had kept pace with inflation, the annual budget for the campus in 22 would have been 4.0 million. And whereas the UW Richland campus now has the smallest enrollment of any campus in the UW system, and whereas economic impact reports in 2006 and 2018 found the campus had an estimated $7 million direct impact on the Richland County area economy, 
And whereas the working people of Richland County paid for the construction of the campus in 1967 and have maintained it for 55 years with our countywide property and sales tax revenues. And whereas a full-time recruiter is the number one priority for our campus. And whereas a college campus in our local community gives working people and their kids the opportunity to attend a local university so they can gain an education and then earn a better living. And whereas UW System President Jay Rothman issued a directive on November 22nd, 2022 to Interim Chancellor Avedovich to, quote, develop a plan to adjust the offerings at the, the Richland campus by transitioning the in-person degree instructional programs at Richland to the main UW Platteville campus. And whereas testimonials have been received from students, alumni, K-12 school staff, and community members that recruitment for the UW Richland campus was not being faithfully carried out by UW Platteville. And whereas state elected officials have been misinformed of the facts, including State Senator Howard Markline, who stated on December 11th, 2022, in the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel, enrollment continued to decline no matter how much money, resources, and attention the UW system invested. And whereas the UW Richland campus niche is affordability, small class sizes, an international program, a rural setting, and geographic accessibility for lower income and working people. And whereas a petition with 1,500 signatures asks that Governor Evers, Senator Markline, Assemblyman Kurtz, President Rothman, and President Rothman rather, meet with the community to share ideas about how to save the campus. And whereas the county board has already passed resolution 22-72 requesting the state increase budget uh, to 2015 levels. And whereas Richland County owns and leases the 134 acre campus to the UW system through a memorandum of agreement through 2042. And whereas the MOA states that the board of regents and Richland County have deemed it quote, mutually advantageous to serve the educational needs of the people of the Richland County area by maintaining a branch campus. And whereas the MOA states it shall be automatically terminated as of June 30 of any year if A, appropriations by the legislature are insufficient to permit continued operation of the branch campus, B, state legislation concerning higher education in Wisconsin involves a fundamental change in the branch campus program. And whereas the MOA includes 30 acres of sloping farmland behind the campus, and whereas Richland Center has a housing shortage as determined through a 2019 housing and workforce study, and whereas due to levy limits and reduced state shared revenues, Richland County government has struggled to maintain buildings on the campus. Now, therefore, be it resolved, Richland County implores the UW system to return a full-time recruiter to the UW Richland campus and be it further resolved, Richland County submits a budget request for $4 million for the 2023 to 2024 academic year to the UW system to abide by the terms of the MOA to maintain a branch campus at UW Richland campus. And be it further resolved, Richland County requests a professional outside mediator to be present during any further negotiations where UW Platteville staff are present. And be it further resolved, a portion of the farmland shall be removed from the MOA for an environmentally sensitive housing development with property tax proceeds dedicated to the ongoing upkeep and maintenance of the UW Richland campus. And be it further resolved, Richland County shall work with the UW system to determine a mutually beneficial minimum level of student enrollment required to keep UW Richland as a branch campus. And be it further resolved, Richland County shall also work with the UW system to determine clear annual targets to quickly return to the minimum student enrollment level. And be it further resolved that the county clerk shall, that the county clerk sh transmit a copy of this resolution and the attached presentation to Governor Tony Ebers, the governor's deputy policy director, Katie Domina, UW system president, Jay Rothman, each individual member of the UW Board of Regents, UW Platteville interim chancellor, Tammy Avedovich, UW Platteville Assistant Provost Michael Compton, State Senator Howard Markline, State Assembly Representative Travis Trannell, State Assembly Representative Todd Novak, State Assembly Representative Tony Kurtz, and Wisconsin Counties Association President Mark O'Connell. A lot to take in. <laughs> Any discussion about what was presented and about the resolution? Daniel? What concerns me about what you just said there is there's a, there's a number of stipulations that are basically somewhat 
hidden in between the lines there. If we don't do this, if we don't do that, we then can be shut down by the UW system, correct? Talking about minimum students and so on. Is well, that correct? That sort of reflects what the MOA uh, has on its uh, actual writing if things change. If I may, Linda, may yeah. I would what I'd like to do here is take this here and let's forget about this. Okay, let's forget about that. And take this from a status. What is our status here? Our status is lack of students. Okay, for whatever reason. Uh Let's not blame the governor. Let's not blame the Republican uh, houses. Uh, for, let's forget about Madison for the moment. Let's just think about Richland Center because I tell you what, I have constituents that call me. They cry about the status of that school. I also have constituents that call me and say, let's bulldoze it over. Some of those people might even be in this room. I don't care if they are or not. Let's take this from a position of status. And Linda, the only thing I'm disappointed in you is I was hoping that you would try to draw from us any ideas that we may have. Have we exercised every single option we have to save that school? Have we done that? Well, we're going in. Other than, I mean, excuse me, but other than just uh, uh, trying to satisfy UW Platteville or satisfy UW Wisconsin, have we actually tried to do that? I have an idea, which I've kind of been holding it to myself because I really don't feel, I think it's your position to pull it out of me and pull it out of the rest of these board well, members. We're going into closed session and that would be an excellent time to do that. Um, uh, one more time, a little louder. We're going into closed session. That would be an excellent time to do that, but you could also say it now. Uh, this is I'm what not we're sure discussing. why that should be closed session. That's, that's no, it doesn't business. have to be, but this is where we're discussing. You can discuss it right now, your ideas. That's what this is. It's all ideas. Okay, back to my position of status. It's it's what's best for Richland County. We've got a money problem in Richland County. Okay, to me, the key to Richland County is, is the city of Richland Center. And the key to Richland Center is the campus at the UW, UW Richland campus. We've got to fix those things. We can't fix our money problems with the county of Richland if our university is allowed to die. It just won't happen. This, this community will die. And if this community dies, Richland County is going to die. We're going to become a backwater second level county. I know we're one of us smaller, but just because we're smaller, that doesn't mean that we have to be, uh, uh, that we can't be a shining star, to borrow a phrase from President Reagan, some shining star in the, on the hillside. Okay, we can do that here. But we have to do it from a position of status. Forget about UW Wisconsin. Forget about UW Platteville. They don't, you just said, they don't seem to care about us. We don't seem to have any friends. So let's be our own best friend. And let's, whatever it takes, and this is, alludes it to my point here, is we have to keep it as a viable school. And if we exercise every single option to make it a viable school, again, a school that actually not only brings students, but also brings teachers. I mean, we, all this stuff is, like I said, everything you, everything you presented up here today, we already know. Almost everything we already, already know. Let's forget about the past. We got the future now. It's a new day. And we don't have friends to help us be part of the past anymore. They're going to go on. The bigger schools are going to are going to uh, dominate. UW has got they have a record freshman class. Platteville's uh, enrollment's up 13 percent. Okay, they're they're recovering down there, but we're not. We're one of the schools that's not recovering. And that's not that's there's that's a not a sin on anybody. It's just one of the things that happens. This happens all this is somewhat of a, I hate to use this term, uh, uh, but it's, it's, it's kind of a refit, you know? I don't like that, I don't like that term. But this is what's happening here. The refit is, we're on the out on the refit, okay? And there's schools that are still in on the, re, on the refit. We're not one of them. So, uh, it's a question of status. Where do we go from here? Okay, have we, have we sat down and, enter, and has entertained every single 
potential solution to this? Have we done that yet? Uh, Are I'm, we still trying to be a school of the old? Um, so you're, I, I just want to make sure I understand your, your ideas is you would like to uh, not be part of the UW system, but develop our own campus. Is that what you're thinking about? That's exactly what I'm okay. saying. So I'm just going to play a little bit of a question on that. Uh, it takes a lot of money to pay salaries, benefits, licenses. As you know, the county pays a ton of money in, in licenses for technology. Um, the amount of money that it takes to run a campus and just start from scratch is pretty much um, a difficult thing to do. And I don't know, I think that's a wonderful idea. I think our best bet would then be to sell to another university who might want to come here. But I don't think that we could, we don't have the money in the county to afford starting our own campus from my perspective. Anybody else wanna comment? Uh, Madam Chair, I would just say to Supervisor McGuire that I think just, oh gosh, 14 days ago, I was having this very debate in my mind about do, should we just head off on our own or should we hold the UW system? Should we continue to try to collaborate with them and hold them, a, you know, I, hold accountable. I mean, we, all we can say is like, we don't think you did a very good job of recruiting. And, you know, this is a big reason why we're in this situation. So I was kind of debating those two things and, and I've been talking to several community members about it. And the points that chair Gentis brings up, the other thing is accreditation, getting accredited. And I just feel like maybe we will have to go down that path, but this is a public university where they're taking our tax dollars, Richland County tax dollars, and they are, they're running the UW system. And so if they pull this away, we lose all that vitality in that future without a guarantee that we're gonna find a replacement um, institution. So in my mind, I, I'm not saying your answer is the wrong one either because Boy, have I really debated that personally. It's just then after talking to enough people, I think the idea was, you know, we really look, have to look at the benefits of the UW system and what a good partnership that could be. I don't think this, this proposal is living in the past. This proposal is saying, shift us, make us part of a four-year campus that's thriving and let us help provide our expertise to help help the whole state out. You know, it's not just about us either. We have to be a good partner and we could be a really good part. I went to school in a big city and I'm a rural kid. I was a rural kid. <laughs> and I think I probably, even though my experience was good, I think I probably would have thrived more in a setting like this initially. That, that transition was really tough for me as a small town kid. So I think we have a lot to offer to the whole state, I think we could help other people out from rural places all around the state. And we could show them, hey, you can do this in a small town. Like this is a good setting for, for higher education. Any other board members wanna talk about the resolution and the presentation or ideas? Anyone comfortable with the resolution or not comfortable with it if we decide to have a motion for it? Any suggestions? Yes, Bar Voice. A little closer, I, I, I think you're not. Wait. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, I support the resolution. I especially like the part about having a, an independent person be at a meeting if we could ever get a meeting um, kind of as a mediator because um, I think that everybody feels so strongly about this. There's a lot of defensive and offensive feelings here. Um, I think that's an excellent thing. I, I, I see what Dan said and I, and I have to admit, 
thought the same thing, thought it'd be a great idea. And then I started thinking about accreditation, who would come to a new campus that isn't accredited. Um, and it takes a few years to get the accreditation and who could afford it? I mean, we can't afford something like that, but maybe if we could work together like this, but I really do like the mediator idea. I think that was excellent. So um, that's it. Yes, Carolyn. No, not at all. Be, and I, that's a good point. I thought of that earlier. And no, because this has to go to the county board. So this would just be a resolution forward of that. So definitely we want to hear from you today. Yes, Mark. Does anybody, how many campuses out of them satellite campuses, you know, before when it was just the, uh, how many of them are still running today? All 13. All 13 are still. Yeah. Yeah, that's at Marinette, which I explained at the last meeting. And uh, yeah, they're all Wausau, which was a huge campus, has lost their international program after they were put with it at Stevens Point, I think. And so they've all been. There's something going along that's competitive with the four year campuses that they don't want to have these campuses compete. Well, I mean, I mean, just to me, looking at it logically, I mean. I got a satellite campus here. I got staff here. I got all this stuff, but I already have staff here. And if I have enough enrollment, it makes perfect sense to keep it going. But if I don't have the enrollment, it makes perfect sense to move it all to where I already am established. And I realize that's probably not what everybody wants to hear, but I mean, no. that's the reality of it. I mean, if I got a business here and I got a business here and this one here has a majority of my workers, I'm going to funnel everything to that. And I think that's what you're seeing here. And that's why all of them are kind of getting devoured up or, or realigned or consolidated, whatever you want to call it. I mean, the UW system has to operate successfully also. So I kind of get that side of it. I mean, I hate to see the campus go away. I wish we could bring in the 500 students we used to have. I mean, I remember it flourishing when I was 20 years old. But I don't know how we do that, right? And if we don't have the support from the UW system, we don't have the money to push and bring more. I mean, we just don't. Everybody knows that. I mean, we talk about it every meeting I'm in. I, so, oh, go ahead. No, that's. I agree with you. The, the new paradigm hasn't been working. I will say that off the record, when I was at the Regents meeting, that different chancellors and different people came up to me and said, I understand what's happening to you. Don't give up. So obviously there's more here that meets the eye. And I guess that's what we're trying to get the word out, that there's more here and we're just gonna still beat the drum until it's done. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm- Jake, we're not, we're only a minute or so because we gotta keep moving here today. So um, what, what you said, I believe strongly that our number one problem is enrollment. We do have low students. That's a, it's a huge problem. There are a shortage of classes, professors, a lot of online stuff. And I also think that if this campus goes away, that is going to hurt the, the county, the city dramatically. So we have to find a way to do this. And I know you talked about having our own autonomy, our own funding. I think that would be definitely an idealistic goal. If we can partner with Madison, uh, UW Madison, at least for a short time to kind of rebuild ourselves to the point where we can generate the money. And uh, part of the student here is going to be the international program. That's so important because they're paying two to three times the amount of money than an in state student is. We had a very vibrant program. Eagle School right now consists of like <clears throat> the high school body is about like 80% exchange students. So if Eagle, Stu uh, Eagle School keeps um, having these exchange students that keep coming there, we can push them over to UW. Richland, and that's going to be a lot of exchange students there. 
and as mentioned in the PowerPoint before, we had a lot who were denied or, or had too much of a difficult process that they had to switch to other campuses. So the international program is so important. The recruiting is so important. I've actually personally offered my services as a student to go to other schools, including uh, Eagle School, to go up there and provide a presentation to get students to come over there. That's free marketing for the campus. I have a lot of positive uh, benefits to kind of give out to the students and that will push them over. It's a lot of great small town vibes. I was born and raised here in Richmond Center. So yes, I 100% agree that low enrollment is our problem. If UW-Madison is also has an excess of the freshman population, they can send those students over here, which is an incentive for those students because they're going to save money. So if those students come over to Richland, they can do their two years, go back to Madison, and then they can make the choice between the two. And that is that will also uh, give them incentives to stay in the state as well, which doesn't always necessarily impact Richland County, but that's better for Wisconsin as a whole. And then, um, as he mentioned over here, that Wisconsin is in the $6.6 billion surplus. Jay Rothman stated that we were looking for the money and the resources in the UW Regents meeting. And another uh, Regents uh, board member had called him out on that. He said, yeah, actually, we do have the resources. We do have the money. What you just said there was completely false. That was Robert Atwell. I sent him an individual meeting, um, <clears throat> individual email trying to get his support because he really seemed like he was for uh, our cause here. A lot of the Regents said that they were local, local focus, community focus. They use those words, and then they're not communicating with Richland at all. There was no communication anymore. We've been completely blindsided by everything that's happening here. A lot of students thought that the Richland campus would start to go downhill by about 2025, and we just kind of got hit by like this truck, like right here. So I think if we partner with UW-Madison, there's a lot of incentives to send kids over here, and we can generate the revenue to get to the point where we can be self-autonomous. That's what I would have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Ingrid? I have a question. Did you actually get to speak with members from the Board of Regents about this? Uh, do you kind of yes, recap? Yes, but not that? in a formal setting, in it, before and after their meeting. Okay. Is there any, like, I mean, I guess, could you summarize what the uh, feeling their was? Their summary in general, well, first of all, Chris Peterson, who had been out here, was absolutely just distraught that this had happened to us and she was totally taken by surprise by it. So they did not know about it. And they all said, we need to work through Mr. Rothman and uh, try to get him to learn what we're doing here. Mm -hmm. Yes. I would just add one thing that I don't think a lot of them understand what's happening here. I think a lot of them feel bad They're, that I heard some kind of parodying of the lines that Rothman said in his press release, but I don't think a lot of them have been educated, if you want to use that word, about this situation and what specifically was happening here and led to such a big drop. I think they think it's something wrong with us, honestly. Um, I don't think they know that there were other outside forces that made it so that we couldn't even enroll our local students who wanted to come here. You know, I mean, I just got the feeling that no one knew that. So I felt like we were going there to really tell our story. You know, we're losing students because they wouldn't, because there were folks who would not basically let them come here. Not let, that's too strong a word. It's more like they were not facilitating that process. So I don't think any of the regents understood that or, or knew that. I don't even think Rothman knew it, was my feeling. One of the things that is interesting is we looked at the dates, many of the regents were appointed and there's a lot of recent appointments and we realized that they didn't have the history of the last 10 years. Any other, before we move on with the, because we, we might lose people in a quorum, we got a lot to cover here. <laughs> I've, got a, I've got a comment. Senator. Yes. Um, I mentioned, uh, like that one kid on the video up here, I'm, I'm from a small school, Highland. I grew up in Highland, a little, little school, okay? But, uh, and like most men, I think in a box. I never quite understood that, but I guess apparently I think in a box. But if you can, if you can see this here, I, when I say to approach this from a position of status, is this is the Illinois-Wisconsin state line 
This is the Mississippi River. This is La Crosse, westerly line. And this is it. Over here would be the city of Madison. It's a big box, okay, like the box, I think. And right in the middle is Richland Center. We are geographically almost dead center in the middle of that geographic box. And what is the one thing that is not in that box right now? Can anybody tell me what's not in that box? We're, there is not, there's no private schools in that box. Richland Center geographically is in position to be the only private school in that box. Now, I appreciate what that young man brought up because uh, he mentioned Eagle, he mentioned Mike, and I was reluctant to bring it up because Mike and I go back a long ways. We've known each other since we were kids, okay? And it, I, I didn't want it to be, to look like it, it was, you know, like I was rooting for him, but I am <laughs> rooting for him, okay? He knows how to run a school, okay? And I would think that what we should do here, and I'm going to really go out on a limb here, and my, my fellow constituents can condemn me if you want to do so, but I'm going to go out on a limb. But I think as a, what are you smiling for over there? <laughs> or do you want to do that? You want to be that person? <laughs> I think we should beg, I think we should beg that gentleman right over there to teach us how to run a private school in Richland Center. Okay, that's my statement. I'm done. I've, I've, I've overused my time in the mic. Linda, I apologize. I'm going to shut up right now. I'm not going to say another word. Okay. I don't think that we're ending this conversation just today. I think this is still, there's time for more meetings to, uh, I think, even at the county board, they're going to have, you know, alternative plans. And I think it, that there can be lots of ideas like yours. I think right now we would like to make sure that the county board is behind going forward and trying to see if we can still work with the UW system. If we can't work with the UW system, then we'll take an alternative plan. Does that make sense? So do I have a motion to approve this agenda, this agenda, <laughs> this resolution? Okay, Barb always moves. Do I have a second? No second. Mark Cooey seconds it. Do I need a roll call or do we, can I, okay, okay roll call, Adam. All right. Aye. 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 Is Bob on? Bob Frank, are you on? I thought I saw him once. Okay. All right. Motion approved. So we will forward this to the county board for tomorrow night. All right. We're going to move on to uh, going to a closed session. Pardon? Yes, I will send it to the clerk. Derek. He's already Caleb. requested that I do that if this passed. Okay. All right, I know it's sort of in the middle of the meeting, you're all here, but there's a few things we have to get done. So do I have a motion to go into closed session? And I would like to have Adam and uh, on, and Clint and Marty Brewer and just the county um, com education committee at the closed session. I know that's why I'm rushing, I'm trying, <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. It's just people up. You might have to come back. <laughs> okay. It's motion. Okay. Uh, Mark Cooey moves and Chad Cosgrove seconds. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Motion carries. Solution in the motion. I'm, I'm confused. Uh, Is it gray button? Gray button. I would defer to the committee as to their preferred means of doing so. A resolution directing me is is just that. It's it's a directive um, versus the alternative that was discussed uh, would be 
I, I would have the exact same guidance as I would for the language already in there for the farmland. What other would you say about a directive rather than a resolution? Directive would work. Okay, um, let's change it to a directive. I, uh, in my opinion, we need to send this to the county board and understand exactly what we're trying to yeah. do here. So what we're trying to do is, uh, is to get East Hall away from the UW system, and then we're going to have a plan to do something with it, whatever it may be. But we want to remove it from the MOA, and I think that's what needs to go to the county board so they can vote on and understand what it is. They can separate from what Sean's resolution is, com completely separate is the way I look at it. It's completely separate. Yeah. This is one thing, and then the, the other, that's why I don't think we want to right. get it involved in that. Let's right. just leave it alone. Okay. Okay, would you read it once more so we make, we're clear? So I have a resolution to direct, sorry, resolution to direct the Corporation Council to remove East Hall from the memorandum of understanding with the Board of Regents. Okay, I have a, for a motion and a second. All of I, it. I am Chair, so I, I, I develop a resolution to go to the County Board. It sounds like someone's making a motion to direct him to develop a resolution he, he's to... got a directive to investigate how to remove that building from the moa he might have to work with platteville we're not sure how that actually works right now well the way you just worded it makes more sense to me than the way that's that's why i'm okay. that's why i'm questioning the way it's worded there we don't have to have it go to county board if we're just asking him to develop or look into it no, yeah. I don't think so either. That's what's a little confusing about all this. It didn't say county board, right? What does it say? Well, but that was Mark's point. Well, my point point is, is that it, it should go to the county board so that the county board understands what we're doing. Yeah. It's I, not just us. I right. mean, then are we, we, we I guess I'm at the point where I've decided that we're, we want to remove this, right? So let's get it done. Take it to the county board say, this is what we're going to do. You agree with it. Everybody agrees with it. Then we can go further with what yeah, ever it happens in May, June, July, August. Did you say everybody agrees with it? No, if everybody. If everybody. Okay. Read it again. <laughs> uh, so the, the title would be uh, Resolution Directing Corporation Council to Investigate Removal of East Hall from the Memorandum of an Agreement uh, with the UW Board of Regents. And the language providing more clarification would be, um, whereas the education committee is interested in the options presented once East Hall is removed from the um, memorandum of agreement, and whereas uh, the process for removing certain buildings from the memorandum of agreement uh, has not been fully defined, now, therefore, be it resolved that the County Board of Supervisors directs Corporation Council, and you can put my name in or not, it doesn't really matter, um, to investigate the process by which East Hall may be removed from the. You got that, Adam? Madam Chair, I, I think we just need to wait. Like, I think we just need to direct him to develop a draft resolution and bring it back to this committee so we can read that because how can he do all this and then it can't go to the county board because we well, have not even right even in january it doesn't have to just come back to this committee that we can't be drafting a resolution on the floor here no work has gone into it yet don't we just need to have him draft something and have it come back here? And, and that's fine. And we meet the before thing, the January county yeah, board right. yeah, we do. The thing we got to make sure we do is it's time sensitive, okay? Yes. We were moving, if I remember correctly, we were moving um, land conservation two years ago, and they just got moved, right? So we don't have that time. So we just made, we need to speed up the process, whatever it takes to speed. Okay, so let's just be, it's a directive to investigate how to remove that and bring it back to the January meeting of the Education Committee. Does that make sense? I would second that motion right, right. there. I think well, that that's I amend, I, we already got a first and second. I'll take it. Amended. Okay, amended. <laughs> Do I have a motion? All right. <laughs> All right. So vote on the amended. Can we vote. Everybody in favor of the well, amendment. How about we? Can we just like 
Trash and start. Yeah, vote yeah. no for the first one. <laughs> uh, that's, that's the way to do it. Okay, so call and vote you, first. you remove your first and second. Yeah, we'll just vote on it. We just vote. Yeah. Just vote it. Uh, with the, all the table talk going on here, I want you to read the motion again. Yeah, so, once more. So my original one. Sorry. It's fine. You have quorum. Okay. So. The original okay. one is a, a resolution to direct, a, to direct Corporation Council to re investigate removing East Hall from the Memorandum of Understanding of the Board of Regents. That was second. That was first by a motion made by Mark, second by Chad. And to bring back the information to the January meeting. Well, that no, was the no. original motion that was. Hold on this. Okay. But on the original. All right. All in favor of this motion signify by saying aye. All right. That's only word. So all right, know. all against the motion. Aye. So you're against the against it. Okay, no, so against what it. are we voting for? Now we can now, now we, we can, can make a new, new motion. motion. <laughs> now we can clear. make it. Oh, I got confused. Okay. <laughs> you need a new chair. So now the motion, as I understand it, is to Madam Chair, can I go ahead and make it? Yeah. I'll make it. <laughs> so a motion to um, direct Corporation Council to develop a resolution and bring that resolution back to the January Education Committee regarding um, the removal of East Hall from the MOA. I'll second. Okay. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed. Whoa. So, just to clarify my direction, you would like me for January to present to you a resolution that, if passed, would remove East Hall from the board. And the, and you're going to find out how you do that because you might have to work. You know, talk with Mike Compton. You have to find out how exactly, since we're a branch campus, how that functions, okay. or whatever we are. <laughs> Yeah. I, I okay. Sorry. Honor. Now we're going to lose two people. So we still have one, two, three, four, five. We're okay. All right. Moving on. The food service, she had to leave. So she left her uh, finances here. And I'm sorry. She was going to give a whole report on what her update is. But we have uh, the bills. I'm looking. The expenditures were $13,872.27. Do you have a motion to pay those bills? Yeah, I'll make a motion. Okay, Mark moves. Do I have a second? Okay, Chad seconds. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Okay. Uh, Ag and extension, Adam. So, do you want me to actually go through the whole report or? I think you should be as concise as you think is possible. <laughs> um, okay, so I, I do have a little bit of something from each of the each of the individual educators. Just uh, a couple of things that I really want to make sure that we highlight. Uh, first, with our Foodwise program, uh, a lot of you know that they work with the farmers markets. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's a uh, there's an EBT program that we worked on developing a different way for script EBT to be used at the farmer's markets. We worked pretty extensively with the farm market managers there. And just a real highlight extension and the Richland County Farmer's Market is actually going to be highlighted in the National American Heart Association newsletter. Yeah. So I think that's really cool. Um, they generated an extra $2,000 in EBT spending down at the farmer's market on 60 different sales. So I think that's really cool that some of the programming that we're able to do allows some of those dollars to come in uh, and work with uh, local communities. Chelsea Wanake, a um, couple things to highlight with uh, human development to education. Uh, she received uh, a accommodation from the Governor's Council on Financial Literacy and Capability. Uh, so I think that's pretty impressive uh, for her work that she's done with uh, Universal Child Care Savings Systems account. She's actually been in Madison and testified on the research that shows how starting a college savings account encourages low income families to pursue a, a post secondary education of some sort. Uh, so that group was getting was getting recognized also by the governor's council. So I think that's really uh, cool and impressive for our local staff. 
uh, 4-H. Uh, as we all know that this is the beginning of the 4-H cycle. We also went through uh, the whole uh, 4-H awards program. There's been a lot of partnerships started with the schools and some exploratory days, scholarships, uh, looking at some different uh, livestock education programs with the schools. Um, one cool project that uh, Carlene's really involved with is an access and inclusion for individuals with disabilities. They're starting a statewide team. Her and Emery, the Vernon County uh, educator, are developing a statewide curriculum for ESL uh, people. So the people that are hard of hearing will have a 4 H program directive and how to develop and include those people into 4 H programs. Uh, one cool thing, too, is Chelsea and Carling had been doing work on a program called the Juntos program. If you want to pass it around, they did a poster presentation that are all colleagues, but this is really working with the Latinx population. Uh, so how do we incorporate into high schools and get them onto post-secondary pathways? So it's a really cool program that's been uh, going on for about a year now here in Richland County and really taken off. Uh, our ag educator has been doing lots of work, uh, especially in the beef realm, uh, starting to, there's going to be a cattle feeders workshop that we're, that will be here in February. Uh, some of the other programs she's been working on, one is called Comet Training. Uh, mental health and stress for farmers has been a big thing. Uh, this is a really a way to, it's a program for producers when they notice other, their friends, family are not really acting themselves, how to initiate some of those conversations, how to work on some of those suicide prevention techniques at a personal level before you move it on to the next step. So that's really interesting. Uh, and also looking at a Women in Agriculture Day, um, we've been get they've got, a, Carolyn's got a couple calls already this past year. Uh, my husband passed away. I have this farm, how do I keep managing it? That was never my role. I did the books, but I didn't do anything else. So it's really, uh, a program designed to help farm families plan for that un unfortunate event and put some steps into place. Who do I call to help get these things rolling? What are the steps I need to take moving forward? Um, and then again, just a regular litany of calls of what do I do with my land, land rents, pay for forage sampling, those types of things. Uh, so in a really quick brief synopsis, those are just some of the things that the educators have been working on in the past month. Very good. And I think I'm almost out of breath. <laughs> <laughs> okay, should we approve your monthly expenditures? Sure, uh, you should have them in your packet. Yeah. Um, I don't even remember what the numbers are. Give me a second, I'll find them in the stack of paper somewhere. But they're all pretty standard. Um, we had in our office extension accounts, 515 total, most of it was just for copier duplication and telephone. And then our program accounts, which is our, out of our non-lapsing accounts, uh, were for the plan ahead program, which is a, uh, uh, just as a sound, how do you do later life planning uh, program Chelsea's been working with in Lone Rock, Rock, Lone Rock Library for 3808. So those are all our extension expenditures. Okay, the total then, I've lost it, I've changed my screen. So the, the extension program, the office accounts were 515.28 and the non-lapsing accounts were 38.08. Okay, do I motion to approve the expenditures? Okay, bar voice moves. Second by Chad Cosgrove, <clears throat> all in favor? Aye. All right. Opposed? Okay, motion carries. Punitos, punitos. I have to learn how to say that word. Puntos. Punitos. Okay. All right. Is that it then? I think you're doing okay on that. Um, see, we'll be back to our discussion. Um, yeah, I think we already had that. Is that okay? Or do you want to say any more about the move? So, we don't know. We'll just say we're being moved and don't know what's happening. Yeah. Well, I think Clint and all the committee will try to work with you and help you. The, I mean, we're definitely. Want to be supportive. Yeah. Okay. Fixing the East Hall, the leak. And I know, Clint, you said you were busy. Have you had any time to look into that? Best guess through Russ Moans is that it was not going to be covered underneath the warranty. Uh, that would have to be something we'd have to be assessed. Why is it, since it's not been a year, that it's not under warranty? Do you know? For the East Hall? 
Yeah, it, it, Mike thought it was done in the last year, right? The roof. Yeah. Oh, is is this? I think I was underneath the assumption this is underneath the uh, slanted part that's been up there for multiple years. This is underneath the flat section. Oh, the east okay. hall is in the back. There's a back room. Yeah. I don't know if that's slanted. I have to go look yeah. where that is the all the machines and things like that. Right in the middle of the room, there's a little bitty bucket on the floor, and it just drips into there, one spot. Yeah, although it, it right. Well, if we approve, well, it's a new roof. We approve the contract. Russ will be coming back this way. We'll have him take a look and see if we can track down if that's yeah. Especially since we're thinking of removing it, so I think we should. Make that a priority. In there. Okay. Okay. And then the next thing is the um, SRC regarding the building and uh, the foundation is not here. We have to still work with them a little bit. Isn't that what that's about? This you have on here. The um, so SDR CEG. So that's design. an agreement with Russ Moan's uh, company to have yeah. him come in. It would be motion to enter into a contract with STR, Specialty Engineering Group, for design services of the partial roof replacement on the Wallace Student Center. Yes. This is to try to mainly address that leak. I think that's over by the fire dampers. Is that the correct word or over the staging? And that's 150000 Isn't that correct? <laughs> that was his estimated uh, cost to replace that section in its entirety. Um, you've got 100000 that's in the budget right now, so I asked him through the specification design to try to break it down into sections, knowing that we have we might not be able to get all that or the prioritization might be put on the section, again, that's right around those fire dampers, which I think came in at around fifteen, ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000 to try to address yeah, that. Yeah, it says 10 possible. on here, right. So, um, entering into this contract, it's $8,000, which, again, would be paid for out of your $100,000 piece of the pie from Fund 92. So we need a motion to move forward on this, correct? I'll make a motion. Do I have a second? Bar voice seconds it? The chat is... Uh, yes, black. Okay. Uh, we're moving to do part of the copper top roof, Chad. All in favor, signify by saying yes. All right. Close. Okay, thanks, Clint, for following up on all that. All right, we're getting there. Michael, the campus update. Okay, uh, I think you all have copies of the building report, so I'll yeah. go over that. Um, the first item, though, I want to address on here is the quarterly sprinkler inspection. That was, uh, and I have the originals here, that was uh, an expenditure that was already approved last, I think, last month. And we got a notice again that says uh, it's past due. So this is just a reminder um, that I'm not sure why that it's not, not paid yet, but Oh, so just we have to talk that, to the clerk, the clerk's office. Yeah, I think so. Okay. Because we certainly don't want any more past due notices on that one. <clears throat> Otherwise, the uh, gymnasium project was completed. The air circulation fan is repaired, and people have noticed that uh, significant improvement in temperature in the 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 uh, recreational area of the gymnasium. Um, that it, that work was just done, so the invoice should be coming in. Uh, within the next 30 days. Uh, moving on to outstanding and current projects, the, on, the only ones that we're really working on would be with the copper top building on that uh, boiler pump assembly, uh, the broken water pipe in the gymnasium, and the boiler pump repair in the gymnasium. Uh, we're still looking into the urinal and the men's restroom in the Melville Hall is broken, so we're trying to get someone to give us an estimate. That's I think with all the news flying around, that's been pretty hard so far. No one's returning calls to come and look at that, so we will keep looking at that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And with the drinking fountain, since 
since the um, estimates had, had popped up a little bit um, with the cost for the other repairs he'd already approved, right now we're not looking into the drinking fountains and science building. We're just leaving that for now. So um, that's the, those are the main topics I have for building reports. And so there's no new builds that are submitted on this uh, this month. It's just a reminder on the yeah, this on other that. one, the sprinkler one. Forty-seven eleven. Okay. Yep. Talk to them about that. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. So, um, let's see. I'm looking at you because you, you wrote down what you wanted to do. So, are you ready for the general transition update with you and Carolyn, or what do you want to do next? Yeah, we can do that. Okay. Welcome. Thank you. I've never sat at the table. Um, <laughs> it's a new experience. You can have me right into it for people yeah. to hear. Um, first, I really want to begin uh, sort of responding to some of the comments going on around the idea of value. Um, University of Wisconsin Platteville values the work that is happening at UW Richland today. And as long as they've been part of us, and I wouldn't want to suggest otherwise, um, there are really great faculty there, there are caring staff, and we're committed to our students. And that's where I will start today because that's um, my number one focus, but really the university's necessarily number one focus um, in this transition process because HLC, which is our accreditor, requires us to put together a plan on how it is that we're going to serve students in, in the event of ceasing in-person courses. And so what we have had to do is create a plan um, in which we talk with students and which we have begun those conversations. Um, that they can complete their two-year degrees at the other UW Platteville campuses at the same price that they have at Richland campus. Um, and so what that means really functionally for them is uh, a transition that is less um, daunting than what um, collaborative integration would have been because they're already our students. They are already transcripted in our classes. Um, their degrees will just continue on. And so in that way, we're able to continue the education of our students um, at a Baraboo campus and main campus or online, depending on their own choices. So please know that that is going forward and that we have worked quickly, really quickly, right? It's not like this directive was sitting around months ago. It wasn't. We really had to respond um, in time as you are responding in time. And that, that certainly is where we are uh, focusing our attention at the moment. The other work that we've had to do is around supporting faculty and staff during the transition. And as you can imagine, that creates a lot of uncertainty and, and upset for people. And so um, this week there will be an event on campus where uh, we support students by having uh, financial aid officers and uh, advisors and, and faculty do that work to answer the questions they have, but also HR and benefits to answer the questions that our faculty and staff will have in that transition. Um, the, other, the other piece of it, because institutions don't run on their own and we value shared governance, is that we have a faculty senate and a staff senate and a university staff senate and student senate who all are going to be able to provide feedback on the efforts as we go forward. So we also have to work with them. So um, I understand that there is frustration that we haven't been able to talk with you, but we really, it's not, it's not because we haven't wanted to, but we really did feel like we needed to focus first on the people most impacted immediately by the transition. And that really has been where our focus is. And while I can't say that every student's happy, right, with the transition, because certainly they are not, I can say very concretely and, and from the depths of my heart that they're being supported in the way they need to complete their degrees. And no matter what, we will stand by that. So please note that. Um, in terms of the larger uh, building transition, there are a lot of unanswered questions that I don't have a lot of answers to provide today. Um, Provost uh, Weber has asked Assistant Provost uh, Compton there to um, start thinking about putting together an early January convening. Um, at your last education board meeting, you received a document from, from our institution that was in conversation with the city county board chair, um, uh, county education chair, Gentis there, um, around decreasing the footprint, right? I mean, that conversation happened leading up to this. <laughs> Um, and so we would expect then that a decrease of the footprint would definitely uh, align with the move going forward, what that actually entails and what the specifics are of that are. I'm not certain at this moment, um, but looking sort of high level at, at, at sort of where we're going, you know, um, one of the things that's true, you know, you, you, we talked about recruiters not visiting the high schools in, 19, in 2020 and 2021. Well, None of our recruiters were visiting any high schools during that time because of COVID. There was a full stop to that. 
Um, so that harmed uh, enrollment at all all universities, um, including ours during that time. But certainly we're getting back into it and trying to do that work um, for our institution going forward. But the other piece that's really important for you all to understand is that your budgetary experience isn't unlike the University of Wisconsin Platteville's budgetary experience. We don't have extra cash um, sitting around to make this happen. And if we did, we would be able to deal with this longer. This really is a sustainability question. Um, and making sure that we're able to provide high quality learning experiences for our students. Um, I know that our students have enjoyed their time at Platteville, but I'm certain that if you ask any of them, they have all experienced issues with scheduling, right? I mean, what kinds of courses are we able to offer with a six person faculty? Not very many, right? That really creates a very difficult situation to continue going forward. Um, and so the, 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 um, the degree programs will certainly go away. Um, and I can say, you know, some of the things that Rothman talked about in his directive are around upskilling or reskilling. We do that in our continuing education program. Um, most of what we do right now is, is online. We do some in person workshops as needed, but certainly um, I think the pandemic had a really big role in, in sort of pushing what we can do um, using technology as well. So I would think that some of the footprint will certainly be in an online manner. So going forward, I guess you can expect. Um, a request to participate in a meeting um, with us about what that plan might look like and we'll sort of have to hash it out. Um, as you heard from the regents <laughs> and, and the system, right? This is a process they haven't participated in before. There's not a very clear roadmap. It's not only you that doesn't have a clear roadmap. We also don't have a particularly clear roadmap. Um, we know that both the city and the county are impacted by this, as is the university, and we have to come together. We're certainly willing and able to come together. Um, but really, what I would like to emphasize again, right, we are doing what we can do by our students because we have a legal and fiduciary responsibility to do so, and we're doing that right now. Those work is underway because that, that is our primary responsibility to make sure those students can complete their degrees if they wish to complete their degrees with us. Um, so. So that, that has really been the focus of where we're going. We know this is fast. Um, January 15th is coming soon, and so it will certainly be a beginning of January conversation um, with the holidays in between. It's a, it's a tricky time. Um, but then the last thing I wanted to just really share is, you know, I, I have been here. I, I have been coming. Um, Assistant Provost Compton has been coming. Um, we have been charged to do this work. So as you have questions, I am I welcome conversations around the issue going forward. Um, at, at all points, we, we have welcome conversation and, and even with the chancellor, you know, she, she did invite you to come to her cabinet to have a conversation. So, so that that door is really open in our end. I do understand that it's super emotional um, because it's your, your community and you love it and you want it to succeed. And I respect that. That's a respectable point to take and, and to fight for it. Um, and I, I love the University of Wisconsin system and I love the University of Wisconsin Platteville and I also want it to succeed. And I do think that it's very hard to justify a 58, 59 student population going forward, given sort of the course arrays that we can have. Um, but I, at no point did I did I want to suggest that me or, or the leadership of University of Wisconsin Platteville don't value the work that, that our folk are doing there because we do. Okay, th thank you. I have a question about the cabinet meeting. I think I saw it, but I never knew when a cabinet meeting was and we never really got an actual invitation. So um, I just want to say that. And then the other thing, I have a couple things. One probably doesn't have to do with this committee. It has to do with you, Derek. But if I understand it correctly, that the honor of the lower tuition is not just at UW Platteville and Baraboo, but it's at all UW campuses. Is that correct? That's not correct. Okay, um, because I had people at the meeting the other day tell have me that. I people calling me often. Um, yeah. I know it is a point of confusion. The way the directive is written says to come up with a transition plan for students at our institution or another institution. From an HLC accreditation perspective, they, their tuition rate will be honored at any UW of Wisconsin Platteville campus. It's also true that the tuition rate for all of the former UW colleges is the same. So they could attend one of the other branch campuses that exist at the same tuition rate. Um, I have also heard, um, but I haven't seen written that La Crosse will honor the tuition rate through the associate's degree. Um, but all tuition rates are set at the institution level. It's approved by the regents, but UW 
Platt bill sets our own tuition rate, and so we can't speak for the other ones. The other point that I'd make from a learning perspective is our degrees at Platteville align with Platteville degree structures, so we can affirm that one-to-one -one credit um, comparability. At other UW system schools, we won't have that same transferability, so that would be a transfer. So if they're staying within the Platteville realm, we call it transition. Tuition is recognized through completion of the associate's degree. If they go outside to another school, if they go to UW system branch campus, they can get the same tuition rate. But the associates in arts and science, it doesn't exist at all of the schools, right? And so that they, they will have to independently figure out what those um, transfer credits would be. We are hosting our first transition day on Thursday. We will host a transfer fair as well. Um, in the spring term for students to talk to other colleges if that's what they want to do. That's again something that we're asked to do by our creditor. So we're really, it's a customer service protection, right? We're, we're making sure that our students have what they need to continue their education in a reasonable way. And, and in that regard, I'm, I'm certain we're doing our due diligence. Madam Chair? Yes. So that has, is the biggest complaint I hear of an associate's degree at, at UW Richland. Just as soon as I transfer to lacrosse or I transfer to Madison or I transfer wherever, I got to go and take other classes that I already took. That's why they don't use a two year degree. That's why my girls all went to a bigger four year college is because of that reason right there. And it's and it's real. And that's why people don't use it. So it's perfect if you're going to go to Platteville, right? Because you're already in Platteville's program. It, what doesn't make any sense to me is it's a UW system. Why isn't the UW system, no matter what UW, UW, Stout, wherever, it should all be the same, right? And that's where, that's what is, in my opinion, that's what's really hurt this, this campus out here is because them students, just as soon as they left here, they went to Madison and then they had to take them 100 classes over because it wasn't part of their degree. You know, well, I, I think specifying the part of the major is the important part because all the institutions, we don't have all, we don't all have the same major, the same collection of majors. So like what my son experienced when he went to Whitewater, some of the coursework that he took that was offered through other institutions, while it transferred to Whitewater, it transferred as an elective and didn't satisfy the, the major, a, a step in a major. And, and that's where the catch is that, 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 that gets us all in trouble. So you have to you have to really be cognizant of that. And and I had that conversation with him. I said, you know that Clarence isn't going to transfer to Whitewater in your major, right? And he said, yes. But I also realize that it's not the same, really the same course is at Whitewater. So when he got to Whitewater, I said and took that first level of accounting, I said, what was that like when you when you took that course from Southwest Tech in accounting through your high school, how long did it take for that material, that whole year worth of material, how long did it take for you at Whitewater to cover that? He said three weeks. So in reality, it's not the same course. And, I, and that's, I'm that, not. That's I'm not going to debate. With it. No, no. I'm I, just telling you the reality is when yeah. students look at it, they say, "I can't get. I got to go through and retake stuff. I'm not retaking stuff." I think right? that's well, <laughs> I I think when certainly. I I only disagree a little bit when John Poole was there and we had the guaranteed transfer. He looked at every single major and made sure that they were taking the right courses if they were misdirected. It's, so it's true. It, it really is an advising. Sometimes it's, it's an, an advising, advising situation. But it's also, I don't disagree. It's ridiculous that if you have a system right. with 13 schools that you can't get some continuity in what's going there. Certainly, that's the conversation right. nationally. I agree. And certainly, actually, for this committee's knowledge, it will also now include the tech colleges, which are trying to figure out a way to lump transfer into yeah. us, which also have the associate's degree, which is another level of competition, right. which also makes the sustainability question very difficult. I, I agree, that, but yeah. I'm just saying, you know, these are the challenges that everybody that we're running into is whether they believe it or don't believe it, they have an envision in their mind that if I go there, I'm going to end up doing something again. And I don't want to do something again, whether it's true or it's not. But that's because both of my girls said, no way, no way. I'm not messing with it. I'm going, going to UW, Milwaukee. I'm going to Carroll. Uh, Carroll, of course, is private. It's totally different. But th they don't want to deal with that. And time and time again, I had student people tell me that they went, they took a class, went to lacrosse, had to take a class. Wasn't the same class. It was the same level of class with a different emphasis, whatever the case may be. People don't want to do multiple stuff in the same area, let's say, for unless 
that's your plan. You know what I mean? Well, and, and I'm not arguing with you. I'm not debating or arguing with you. I'm, I'm agreeing with you, really. And what really, the the problem is, the people are not understanding of, of when you're when you're getting into that situation and taking those courses. And However, sometimes sometimes I'm, students ahead, don't follow the forward. advice that they're given as well. I don't disagree. However, it seems like every year I see a big push on TV and ads saying your credits will transfer to any UW yeah. college. They're yeah. not saying some of your credits will transfer. The other ones you have to do again. That and that's correct. marketing, and it's lying. It because knows. these kids don't know. It's yeah, correct. there. so there is a very tricky piece there because their yeah. credits will count, but they may not count towards degree. Right. And, and I think that certainly I'm not the only person in the UW system who thinks that we could do a better job of that. Sure. Yeah. Um, but, but it is also getting, at this point, 13 campuses and 13 branch campuses to agree, which is a larger issue than one. I'm going to move on a little bit. Um, and we don't have to discuss this, but when you present a change of the footprint, that only was good for you. It wasn't good for our county to be stuck with buildings that had no use. So I'm not sure that we're totally in favor of a change of the footprint because yes. because we don't have anybody we didn't have anybody when you were here to use those buildings. It's my understanding that um, the the county board executive was interested in a plan like that so that they could figure out how to use them in different ways. Okay, he might. The have. other thing that's changed a lot really is the question of housing, right? And that changes quite often, so it's not clear at all yeah. where you all stand on that. But certainly, a well, decrease I, of the footprint will yeah. be in order. I think that he thought that there were people interested in it, but he was mistaken that those. People all didn't have any money for any of that, and so that all fell through. But I have something else that I maybe you can't answer yet, and we have to wait for January. But the directive talks a lot about online and having a presence. And from what I understand, we're not going to have a room or technical person hired at the campus to be handling that because we do not have broadband throughout this whole county and throughout this area. So how can we be having that kind of change and not have technical assistance? So I'm not sure where we'll end up on that. And I just wanna be honest. Um, at this point, we'll, we'll provide staffing going forward based on what the agreement is. We don't know what that will be, um, but we also have a responsibility to our faculty and staff so they can do their own planning as well. And so it will be based on what that is. But I think, you know, the University of Wisconsin Platteville did put in the wiring for the Wi Fi for that for yes. that entire campus. And that is true. That is work that we've done. Yes. So we, we need to talk about how that's going to be supported because not everybody, I'm not that agile with that. You know, when somebody comes to the campus, they might need some backup or assistance there. Uh, if you're, you know, we'll have to, I guess, find out in January when you come up with. We work together with a plan. Any other questions for Carolyn and Mike at this point? Well, um, I guess this is all very quick and it is somewhat disconcerting to us that no one has discussed anything with the chair of the com this committee or the chair of the county board. There's just been the press release and no communication and since we do have a huge investment here, and since the whole county likes it, I just want to state that fact that we find the lack of communication difficult. I appreciate that. I also appreciate that we knew that this meeting was coming up and we had to get our I's dotted and our T's crossed with our students. And so we, you know, you knew from, from Assistant Provost Compton that we would be here. And so you did have that conversation. Yes. Um, and, and we do know that we need to have a longer conversation as well. Okay, and we're hoping that when you make plans that you don't just come with a directive, but you'll work with the foundation, the alumni association. I think there's a lot of things at the campus that belong, maybe not financially to the area memorabilia, but belong to the area 
And I think those things need to be addressed because it's a very sensitive situation. Yes, I did have a meeting at the Collegium today um, talking about facilities moving forward. We recognize it's preemptive to have a facilities conversation until the 20, the 15th plan is completed. Yeah. But we know that we have to include those people in that conversation to figure out what's going to happen. So yes, we we did. I did assure the Collegium that that would happen, and they brought up the same groups as well. And those were the groups I had intended to okay. include. I appreciate that. Thank you. Any other comments for? Okay. Uh, Michael, do you have anything or John to add? Uh, John, what is your role now in the spring and Michael? This, the, we don't know quite what you're, are you still working with us as normal? We don't quite know what's happening. Yes. Okay. Okay, good. So then we can work on things and do publicity and things like that we need to. Okay, great. All right. Sorry, Tracy, but I did tell you you'd be last on the agenda. <laughs> So can we we'll go through it? Uh, Tracy is very concerned about if we do have changes to the campus to make sure we think about what impact that would be for this Simons Recreation Complex. Thank you, Carolyn. You may, there's no privacy here. <laughs> we only had that one part because we we're doing something with a building. I, I did bring some maps. Is it okay if I pass those out? Can really quick, is that okay? Just hand them here and we'll pass them out. You start. I just thought that this might be better to have just a little map just so you guys can kind of understand the footprint of Simons. And, and I know that there is uncertainty at this point on the campus of what's happening, but I just thought this sounded like a good time to make you all aware of of what Simon's footprint currently is and realize that, you know, they're, they're, it's a really tight footprint for future looking forward. So just wanted to share what it currently is here. Um, so as you're looking at the, the map that I presented, the stuff in the dark black on this map is what's considered Simon's that's not in the lease from the, in the state to the UW. So it's really, out the front of our front door, we really just own the grass up until the sidewalk. The sidewalk is part of the UW Richland lease. Um, and then to the, as you're looking at Simon's front door to the right there towards the library, um, I believe we just own just on the other side of the trees that are planted on there. Um, so just over just a little bit. And then towards the high school, we own just up to the gravel road there. The gravel road is the campuses there. And then the parking lot, this is an old Google uh, Earth picture. So our parking lot is now square instead of round like it shows in the picture there. Um, so then that parking lot is Simon's parking lot. So it starts after the campus parking lot there. And then literally outside our back door is nothing for our land. We do have four solar panels out behind the building and those are what's in that kind of square that's floating like an island back there. That's the solar panels. So that's currently the Simon's footprint. And I just kind of wanted to make sure you guys were aware of that. And then the other thing to be aware on this map is over to the left hand side. It's not quite in the accurate spot there, but we have a drain there in that field that our pool um, in August, September, when we drain it, that's where our water from our swimming pool comes out into the field over there. So I just wanted you to be aware of the different spots of the campus that we currently have and, and what the functions are just to, to be aware. Um, some things to keep in mind as you guys are looking at the future footprint of the campus, if, if there becomes a downsizing of the campus or um, whatever that might be, I understand nobody knows at this point. Um, but I, you know, it'd be nice to have room for the future of Simons if, you know, there becomes a building addition. If we do a building addition out behind Simons, um, if we need a little bit larger of a parking lot, just some of the things. Um, ideally, I think it'd be great if we could have more solar panels. Um, our current solar panels where you can see them here, that is not the best spot for the solar panels. We actually had to change our spot. It was not accepted. Um, the original spot, the best spot for solar panels was not accepted by the Board of Regents back when we um, 
put the solar panels in. So they're actually moved down. So it'd be nice if, if in the future we had decided to do another solar panel project that we'd be able to put the, the new ones back at the best available spot for the sunlight um, for it. So some things to think about that way. Again, I know everything is up in the air, but if the campus you know, really downsizes its footprint. I know last month, um, Dr. Compton had um, presented a downsizing of the campus and included they wanted the storage building out back. If that changes where they no longer want the storage um, shed out back, that would be something that Simons would be interested in. We don't have any real storage at this point. We have a, an upstairs that is cluttered with our excess of stuff um, and really not the greatest um, for moving around and cleaning um, wise. So that would be something, um, I guess, if you guys are are looking at, you know, somebody that might be interested. There's no electricity out in that building. I understand that. I know it's a dirt floor shed out there. Um, it's not heated. It's There's nothing to go with it, but some storage space would be nice. So just some things. I don't have any, um, there's not a recommendation as from the auditorium board. I just came to this meeting. Our board meeting is later tonight. So I don't know if they'll make a you know recommendation and I'll be bringing that back to you guys for what we'd like to see the future in footprint for. But I just wanted to, as things are moving so quickly, wanted to bring this forward to you guys just to, so you guys see what our current footprint is and, and realize it doesn't leave a lot for any sort of expansion for the future for Simons. Did you mention about the road access? Right, yeah, so the road access, we don't have any street, direct street access. So our entrance to Simons goes through the UW campus parking lot. So we have a Simons Circle Road, which most people see that and be like, oh, it's the actual street. And, and literally, no, it was built. We did that signage and went through to get it done so that Google could find us. Google was sending everybody across town by the Community First Bank when you Googled our address. So we changed um, our address to 1250 Simon Circle when originally it used to be 12, 1250 Highway 14. But when you Googled that, it would send us the wrong direction. So that's just a, it's not an actual street running through there. It is actually part of the UW campus that um, comes down to our section of parking lot. It's premature and this is good. Why don't you be working on what you think you would like as more space and make a drawing on that. So when we're ready, we would have something. Does yeah, that make sense? that makes sense. And I had planned on talking with the Simons Auditorium Board yeah. about that, um, but their meeting was later tonight versus before this one. So I just wanted to, as things seem to be moving so quickly, I just wanted to make sure everybody was aware that that I would be working on that and looking at our future and footprint and. Any other questions for? Jason? Oh. Anything else you want to ask us about? I'm, these are very good points. I guess I don't have any recommendations at this time. I would um, definitely um, like to see the footprint change personally for Simons. And owning, owning nothing outside your back door is very difficult mm -hmm. um, kind of situation and having like an island of solar panels, you know, where's the easement to get to that? Right now it's, it's the campus and we are, we have, a, you know, we can get to the solar panels and we work well together. So, um, but if something happened, which I don't know if it will or not, but just looking out to the future. Okay, anything else from anybody? Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming. I believe January 9th is the next second. Uh, Monday in the month of January, which is good because the county board meeting will be in the third week rather than it is tomorrow night. Um, I don't have any correspondence. Does anybody else have anything? Okay, I'm sorry these meetings are getting so long. Oh my gosh, I think that's spam. <laughs> so I leave this on because my husband has a button and I, I'm the responder. Um, so I guess you'll, the January 15th meeting as a, well, that you want that to be as a committee meeting because we need to figure that out. You, you should not. No, no. Okay, okay. So that I didn't know if we need to plan a January 15th meeting also or something. Okay, okay, okay. 
Um, and maybe by March we'll have a normal meeting time and we won't be meeting for three hours. So do I have a motion to adjourn the meeting? Okay, Mark moves to adjourn the meeting to January 9th. Do I have a second? Second by Chad Cosgrove. And I thank everyone for the long meeting and um, I appreciate everyone's ideas and working through what is obviously a very difficult time for our community and for Platteville too. Thank you.